Hello and welcome back to The Note. We're going to talk today about the fascinating field of behavioural finance and how it might impact the way in which investment managers are coached. Now we all know about what a coach does in a, the sporting field, like tennis for example. They don't just tell you whether you won or lost, they'll tell you what was good, what was bad about the game, what strokes worked, what strokes didn't. That's different from the kind of feedback that investment managers get. They merely get told whether they gained or lost, whether they beat the market or failed to do so, as is more common. There is now a fascinating move afoot to break down the way in which we invest to enable people to be coached to improve their fundamental skills in investing. With me now to discuss this is one of the leaders in the field. He's the head of Cabot Research in Boston, Mike Ervellini. Mike, thank you very much for joining me today. A pleasure, John. Thank you for having me. So, feedback. What kind of feedback is it that you think investment managers need rather than the basic performance data that they get at the moment? Well, as you put it so well, the feedback they all live with now are outcomes. And outcomes just aren't enough to improve. So we have to go below outcomes and find out information about skills. And just like the tennis player you referenced who has a serve, a ground stroke, and a net game, investors have buying, selling, and sizing as their principal skills. And then with the, each of those three major groups, there are sub-skills. And with the right kind of feedback and some analytics that we've developed at Cabot, portfolio managers around the world now are learning where the sweet spot is in their buying, selling, and sizing, where opportunities to improve exist, and how to work on achieving those improvements while maintaining and doing more of what they already do well. Okay, let's try to put some flesh on the bones of these concepts. We'll take a look at a diagram where you break decisions down into winning buys and, and losing buys. Take me through how you work out which decisions have worked out, which haven't, and how you can actually change things. Sure. Keep in mind that the managers we're talking about are fundamental managers. They're not driven by models. Right. But yet, some rigor can help them learn about what they do well and don't. So what we do is we identify each time a manager begins a new position in their portfolio, the first time the name comes in the portfolio. We observe about that stock certain characteristics like those shown in this exhibit. And they vary from fund to fund and manager to manager. And the idea is to identify first what's the typical position look like when a manager enters it, and that's the irregular shape polygon up there. Right. And then the second thing is since time has gone by, are there characteristics associated with stocks that for you, a particular manager, tend to outperform versus underperform? and that's the red and green areas. And once we find the green areas, the characteristics of stocks that fit your process and your skill and your judgment the best, then we can use that to build a simple screen to help you fish more in a highly productive pond for your abilities. Okay, now what are the mistakes that people typically make? Selling tends to be more of a problem than buying. Do people hold on to their winners too long? Do they sell too soon? What are the typical kinds of errors that you discover? No question that selling is the biggest area for improvement. If you look at any finance book, when they talk about strategy, it's always about buying. Right. When you look at investor materials about selling, it's a discipline. So simply one's a strategy, one's a discipline tells you a lot about the asymmetry and attention that's given. We've looked at over 600 billion of assets right. under management, and we found that in 85% of situations or portfolios, there's a big opportunity to improve selling. And unlike the general uh, behavioral finance research that points to holding losers is the biggest problem, among professional investors, people managing more than a half billion pounds or more, we find that holding winners is the biggest problem. Because they're proud of them, because they fall in love with the companies that have done well for them, they, they want to window dress their portfolios? There's some of that issue. There's also the fact that as individuals, we have something called the endowment effect, and we tend to value things that we own or that are in our endowment, we tend to value them more than the market does. It makes them sticky, makes them hard to sell. Same is true with used automobiles or homes or any other uh, capital item. Selling is a lot harder than it looks. Okay, so this is in many ways like getting a tennis player to practice their drop shots. This is about telling people, prompting people when they should be considering selling. Let's quickly take a look at a chart which shows the kind of 
improvements compared to the market that you've managed to, to get out of people once you start right. this process. Right. I suppose one final question, um, this is obviously very impressive results, wouldn't it simply be easier to get computers who don't have the same behavioural flaws, irrationalities that we do, wouldn't it be simpler just to have a quantitative approach and get computers to do it? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, there are a few firms out there that have quantitative models that do brilliantly throughout cycles. Generally speaking, th running a quantitative model is not that easy. There, it, most, it, it's not always a superior option to human judgment. And what this particular graph shows is that when managers engage in deliberate improvement, a persistent, consistent, dedicated focus with good feedback, mm. over a period of a few years, they can improve dramatically. And as you can see here, this group of managers, totaling 85, improved by 250 basis points over a five-year period. That's just constantly chipping away at eliminating small problems and doing more and more and more of what they do well. Uh, we believe at Cabot Research that there is a great number of managers who, yeah. with deliberate improvement, can outperform. Okay, Mike, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. That's a, a very interesting statement of intent. As regular viewers will know, I often tend to be a very strong fan of passive management. That doesn't mean that there isn't a place for active management. It's very, very important we have active management. If active management is going to work, these are exactly the kind of issues that active managers need to work on.